So welcome to beautiful and hot Las Vegas for HFMA's annual conference. I'm very excited today to be joined by MG, the CEO of Gebs Healthcare Solutions. Welcome to the, the conference. Thank you, Rich, for having me over. So autonomous coding, it's a real buzzword right now. <laughs> Everybody's talking about it. W what is it and how do hospitals benefit from it? Computer assisted coding is not new to the entire healthcare industry. And now in the awake of ICD-11, whenever that happens, and introduction of AI very rapidly on into the healthcare industry, the whole term of autonomous coding engine uh, has populated. So earlier you used to have computer assisted coding platforms. Now you have something called as autonomous coding engine. Now you ask, the second question is what is autonomous coding engine? It's the same CSE, but this time it is implemented with artificial intelligence. Now artificial intelligence will use certain techniques like machine learning or NLP, and you use these techniques to extract the medical terminologies and the data that is coming out uh, from the medical chart. Now why you want to use autonomous coding engine? First is to increase the efficiency of the coders. As the medical coding is an intense manual process, now there are pros and cons of everything, right? I don't think machines will replace human coders so quickly because the knowledge intensity part and second is the judgmental decision making part. So GEPS has a autonomous coding engine platform that we have developed way back in 2020. Uh, but we do not sell that as a only product that you can give. It is all AI based, but we integrate it with our iCode workflow so that as a continuous package, as a combination between machine and a human that we can provide to the healthcare industry as such. So data breaches, how does this perception of cybersecurity evolve and what are the consequences on the rev cycle if adequate safeguards are not put in place? Yeah, it's a wake up call for healthcare industry. There are several certification standards that are in place, you can get yourself certified and your service provider also certified on ISO 27001. You have SOC 2, you have high trust and you have severe HIPAA uh, compliance standards that can be set in the way you uh, particularly operate. So it is necessary for the organizations to have a very structured policy around it. Such kind of incidences, one causes a lot of challenge in the patient care. But what is more damaging is the patient trust. Right. And what is also very damaging is the reputational damage that happens with this uh, recent breaches. So I'm glad you picked up this subject uh, because it is very critical for all of us uh, associated with the healthcare industry to have a very robust cybersecurity standards and policies. So in order to do that, one, you have to have your processes your products, your technology, your infrastructure, and your networks absolutely secured, right? Now, we can talk about firewalls, we can talk about applications, we can talk about having layer three switches and controlling um, almost all the network parameters, but it is also advisable to conduct some kind of a ethical hacking on um, your employees, uh, do lots of education and coaching um, issue lots of do's and don'ts uh, in your organization. Moving on to patient experience. How can healthcare organizations strategically leverage patient experience data to improve both the uh, satisfaction and financial performance for the organization? Now, in today's world, with all the No Surprises Act and value-based care and accountable care, all these things are getting discussed. The patient is no longer a passive recipient of a care. He has alternatives, he has choices, he needs an experience, and that experience will drive you to a healthcare facility, to a physician, on what kind of an experience that got generated. But what happens thereafter is what happened to me 
what was my pharmacy description, what is the invoicing or a billing that is likely to happen to my claim. So there is something called as expression of benefits, right? I need to understand that, what that expression of benefits is. Why certain amounts is being charged to me? Why certain amounts is not being charged to me? What will get paid on insurance? Another patient experience that is building up is the bilingual capability. Now considering we have a lot of Hispanic population or any other nationality population, the intensity to convert into what native language that we speak is very, very high. The patient experience is directly now linked with your financial performance because this patient will keep coming back whenever there are certain uh, diseases or certain qualities uh, that you will require from the hospital uh, or the patient care facility. Second, the readmissions will stop. Reworks will stop. So one visit, one experience, one facility. That kind of a, uh, consumerism will start getting into healthcare industry also now. I have certainly enjoyed my time with you, MG. I thank you for joining us here for this really great conversation. Thank you well, so much. Well, thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you.